A lot of people, including myself, are using Cloudflare as a DNS provider to route traffic into their home network to expose all those juicy services to the outside world. But there is a problem. Sometimes your ISP changes your IP address and that breaks the communication with Cloudflare. Luckily, there is a solution for that. And that's what we're gonna look at today, running a dynamic DNS service within Docker to make sure anytime your ISP changes your public IP, Cloudflare automatically gets updated. All right, before we take a look at specifically how I have everything set up, let's just do a overall walkthrough. So this is a diagram of my home lab. If you didn't see that video, link down in the description below, but we are going to focus first on Cloudflare and how everything gets into my home network. So up here, we are running Cloudflare that is running a load balancer where the primary and backups are feeding directly in to my primary and backups in my home network. So AT&T is the primary with an IP address ending in 138 and Xfinity is the backup ending in 241. And you can see those line up with the primary and backup in Cloudflare. And everything works perfectly when those IP addresses match, but sometimes your ISP will change your IP address. And then if those aren't in sync, Obviously, Cloudflare doesn't know what the new IP address is and it cannot reach your network. But anyway, from there, once the packets reach my network, they are fed into my UDM Pro. From there, I have a port forwarding rule that forwards all the 443 traffic coming in from Cloudflare to Nginx Proxy Manager within Docker running on this 40.26 server. Then Nginx Proxy Manager will take all that traffic and point it to whatever service it needs to go to. Like I said, when these IP addresses from the ISP don't match the ones you specified in Cloudflare, there's an issue. So we need something that's automated and runs 24 seven that will check these IP addresses and then reach out to Cloudflare and update them. And that is our DD client DDNS service also running in that Docker instance. So let's take a look at my Cloudflare instance for this specific domain. You can see I have a few A records with the IP address being my AT&T one ending in 138. It's also running within the load balancer. So these are the A records. A lot of times these are set up manually with your IP address. And this is where you have the problem. You need something that will automatically update these as well as in our load balancer. So if we look at our pools in our load balancer, we have our AT&T and we have our Comcast Xfinity with the origin address being the 138 and the 241. And again, these need to be updated. And just to show you how Unify is handling that, you can see I have a port forwarding rule that takes everything coming in on 443 and then forwards that to our Docker instance on port 443. So you can see that 40.26 lines up with this server. And then if you wanna see how Nginx Proxy Manager works, that just reads the specific domain and then points that to whatever service locally that it needs to go to. Okay, so let's take a look at my DD client instance. I am running this in Docker. I am using Docker Compose. Here it is running Cloudflare DDNS. Nothing really too interesting to see over here, but we will take a look at my Docker Compose template that I have set up. So here it is, nothing crazy. It pulls from my GitHub, which is a forked version of another uh, repository. Let's actually take a look at that. So here's the repository. I forked it from Timothy Miller's Cloudflare DDNS repository. And the only reason I really forked it was because uh, the load balancing wasn't working. So I went in there to see if I could uh, adjust some things to get it working. And I did. His documentation is really good. And it does have instances for using the load balancing, but I had some things commented out in there and some things that need to be adjusted. So I just uh, did a little tweaking, but all the heavy lifting was done here. So go show him some love if you are using this. But yeah, none of you really give a shit about the code. So let's see how I'm actually using it. So this is the Docker Compose YAML. You don't have to use Portainer. Uh, you can just use standard Docker Compose in the CLI and run this, but everything here will essentially be the same. Um, you'll use this image, you'll probably use the host network. And the only thing that needs to be changed is this config file. So you can put it wherever you want on your host. 
Um, I have it in this location, let's pull it up. So it runs from config.json. So if we take a look in that directory, you'll see I have one, but I'm not gonna show the exact one because that has my API keys and everything in it. So let's take a look at the example one. Now there's not much going on here. It may look a little spooky at first glance, but it does follow pretty much the exact documentation here with the examples of how to set up if you have multiple domains and if you have multiple subnets uh, on that domain or subdomains on that domain, as well as load balancing. You can use this, you can use mine, doesn't really matter. But let's walk through it. The first thing you'll see is a Cloudflare with an array of zones. So if you have multiple zones or multiple domains, you'll have these separated into different zones. So I have a few, you may have one, doesn't matter. Uh, the first thing you'll wanna use is your authentication. You can use the API token or you can use the API key. And uh, when I get to load balancer, I'll explain something, but I'm using the API token. Uh, the difference in those, it, it doesn't really matter for functionality, but now to get those, go into your profile, then go to API tokens, and then you'll have tokens and you'll have API keys. So if you use your API key, you'll have to provide your account email address with it. If you use the tokens, you just have to uh, supply the token. And when you create a token to make sure it works, you'll want to do an edit zone DNS. And you can use the template. Um, the permissions you want on it are for zone and you want it for DNS records and you want it to be able to edit them. Then you'll select zone resources, include specific zone. We want all zones because all of mine run under the same account. If you want to separate it, uh, each zone has a different token, you can do that, but I'll do all zones, continue to summary. When you create that token, it'll give you a string that looks like this. Cool. So these are each different domains. If you wanna look at this one down here, uh, this is a specific example. Uh, we supplied our API token with authentication. Uh, the zone ID is going to be listed. If you go into overview on your domain, you will see down here, you have a zone ID. So you won't supply the name. The name doesn't matter. It is this zone ID. Then the subdomains are your A records essentially. So we have one called link and we want it proxied, which is the name and the proxy status. If you have another one, it would look like this. If you have multiple, you know, it could look like this. And that's really it, I mean, it's very simple. Mine is a bit more complex and it really isn't that complex because I'm using load balancer. So let's take a look at our load balancer because we are using link for that. Now this may be confusing, I'm realizing that um, because I have this link one set and it's being used in the load balancer. So realistically with this specific example we're looking at, this would probably say test because that's not in the load balancer. This load balancer instance will handle everything in the load balancer. So let's take a look. Okay, we're going to go into manage pools, which you should have multiple if you're using the load balancer. And we are going to pick a pool that we wanna update. Now, this isn't the most optimal setup because as of right now, there's no way of supplying uh, the IP address to both of your pools because uh, this instance can only pull one of your IPs. Uh, I would have to run a second instance of this connecting directly to my Comcast one and update that origin. But for right now, updating the primary one is fine with me. So pretty similar setup, except you'll notice I'm using the API key for this one. Why? Well, if you look at Cloudflare's API, they specifically specify that to use this load balancer DNS update feature, it does not allow the use of a token. So if you're supplying token and wondering why it's not working, it's because the actual Cloudflare API does not support that. So use API key for this one. And you'll specify a pool ID and an origin. So once you go into edit, you'll see the pool ID listed here. Copy that, paste it here. And then the origin is going to be the name of the origin listed. So if you have multiple here, use that. If you have one like me, pretty simple. And that's really it. Honestly, once you have this config set up, you'll just deploy this and it will update and we can 
check it in real time. So let's try that. So let's say um, that my IP address changed and these no longer match. Maybe this is now 139 instead of 138. And it's like, oh no, now um, none of my uh, stuff works. Oh no, it's unknown. Ah, now this runs every five minutes. So within five minutes, it should work, but I'm just gonna restart it so that uh, we can see it work in real time. All right, and taking a look at the logs, you can see that updating load balancing pool, AT&T. So that should have worked. Ignore all of this. This is when I was testing uh, some other stuff, but the most recent log says that it actually updated it, which is good. So if we refresh here, we are now showing a healthy state and we can see this was changed back to 138. And this works for everything, not just load balancing. It works for all the DNS records you have in those domains. Runs every five minutes. So maybe uh, you have a five minute downtime, but honestly, not bad. I'll take it. So that's it. Comment down below if you're using this method or just let me know what you're using as a dynamic DNS. If this worked for you, then leave a like. If you want to see more content like this, then go ahead and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my DNS that's very dynamic and hosted in Docker because you're the best. That may have been one of my worst ones. You guys are awesome. And if you're still watching, you're great too. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one.